Hi, it's me again, Kavantu, and welcome to my channel. Today I want to show you the upgrades I installed on my Anit 82 Plus 3D printer to not only increase the print quality and reliability, but to also improve safety. As always, you can find all links to the things I use down in the video description. The A2 is an example of a cheap printer that can print right after assembly, but the quality is anything else than good. You might want to check out my initial review of this machine as well. Let's start off with the solution to the worst problem, the extreme C-layer compression. This problem was mainly caused by the dynamic coupler, which connects the motor shaft to the lead screw. Some layers were compressed and others, especially in higher areas, were pulled apart. Loosening the screws holding the wheels helped a little, but didn't solve the problem by far. The real problem solver was the C-axis in the middle upgrade by Carsten Heuer, which not only improves the balance of the X-axis, but also mounts the lead screw on the motor, using the dynamic coupler how it's designed to be used. Mounting the part in the center of the X-axis is necessary, and the motor's position can be adjusted Y-wise to make the axis straight. This upgrade completely removed the layer inconsistency. Other upgrades that drastically increased the overall print quality were the X and Y axis tensioners. The X axis tensioner is very simple and consists of only two parts and a screw for adjustment, while the Y axis tensioner is a little bit more complex, as it consists of five parts and a few screws. Normally there would be a sixth part, namely an adjustment wheel, but as I had no long enough M4 screws, I just used an M3 one with a wing nut instead. Moving over to electrical safety, the first step for me was to get rid of the loose power supply, where the high voltage input terminals are not fully enclosed and the strain relief is non-existent. There was already a PSU case on Thingiverse, which mounts the device safely to the right front. It was designed by our friend Chris Riley. This PSU case mounts a fused and switched power inlet which is available for a few bucks on AliExpress and furthermore increases the safety. Unlike my other PSU cases, the device is screwed onto the case using the original case screws instead of the back screws, keeping the footprint small. I quickly designed an electronic box for the A2, which mounts right above Chris's PSU case and holds the ANET controller board and the MOSFET module. It's printed in two parts, namely the box and the cover, and without supports. However, I've printed it on ANET A8, as I already printed the cover on this machine and wanted to have this upgrade finished as soon as possible. As the X motor is a little bit longer than the extrusion, longer screws have to be used together with some nuts, acting as spacers. The MOSFET module adds additional safety to the machine, as the high current needed for the heated bed bypasses the controller. Furthermore, I've upgraded the hot end to an E3D V6 style one. The whole upgrade cost me less than 10 bucks and removed the hassle of stuck filament in the heat break when pulled out too quickly at a filament change. The ones I've ordered are PTFE inlined, as I have not managed to get one of the cheap all metal heat breaks to work reliably. The upgrade consists of two parts, namely the hot end fan adapter and the parts cooling fan holder with duct. I've printed both on the A8 as the A2 had filament stuck in the heat break again and I didn't want to disassemble. You need two 40mm fans and M3 screws in different lengths for the assembly. The parts cooling fan gets connected to the second fan output of the controller, where it works right away. Additionally, the original Bowden tube was, with an inner diameter of 3mm, 1mm too thick for a 1.75mm filament, causing the filament to curl and even break. By the way, in my initial review I've mentioned that I broke the tube coupler as they are not equal to the couplers used on the E3D V6 style hot ends, of which I had a lot by the way, I just designed and printed the part with the thread, heated up the coupler with a lighter and pressed it into the PLA. It worked like a charm and never caused any issues. The heated bed is the second big problem of ANET printers, as it draws more current than the white plug can handle. Therefore I've sold it on 1.5 square millimeter or American wire gauge 16 wires directly and guided them through a cable chain. This chain is two elements longer than needed to avoid stress on a bed holder, which is just glued onto the acrylic bed base. Furthermore, I've installed some cotton insulation on the underside of the bed to achieve faster heating times and overall less wasted heat and energy. Now, there's one upgrade that drastically increases the reliability of the printer, namely a filament runout sensor. I've done a dedicated video about how to set it up on both the RAMs and the ANET controller boards, so make sure to check it out. But as a summary, 
The sensor is basically a switch that is pressed when filament goes through and released once it runs out or breaks. In this unlucky case, the printer pauses the print and waits for the new filament to be added, potentially saving you some many hours long prints and a lot of material. Features like the filament runout sensor are unthinkable without the proper firmware and I went with Marlin again. It's installed rather quickly and you can follow my Marlin on ANET A8 video which shows you how to adapt and upload the firmware to the ANET board. Start with the A8 preset and don't forget to edit the axis length because if you have an A2 plus like me, the Y axis is 5 cm longer than the one on the A8. Furthermore, make sure that the correct LCD is selected and try out your installation. If an axis goes the wrong way, there is an inverting feature for each of them. Did I mention that Marlin has several software features that increase the safety of the machine? Now, let's move over to the last upgrade, the LED strips. They are the best cheap solution for some illumination of the print and build plate. I bought these 12 volt 4000 Kelvin LED strips from AliExpress for about $2 for 5 meters, which is about 16 feet 5 inches, and you can cut them about every 2 inches. They are self adhesive and are sticked on some 2020 profile slot covers, which were previously added into these slots. You need to solder the wires on by yourself, and I connected them directly to the 12 volt input. Based on my experience with the LED strips on my ANET A8, I've chosen not to add a switch because the only time I've switched it so far was for demonstration to you guys. The print quality definitely increased with these upgrades. There's no more wobbling on the C axis and also no more layer compression. Furthermore, thanks to the tensioners, the wobbling along both the X and the Y axis got reduced by a lot. While the prints are not perfect, you can see real improvements. Remember the rocket in waste mode I tried to print in the review video? And now compare it to the latest one. For most other prints, the upgrade of the Bart's cooling fan with the good duct helped a lot as well. In the end, it's your own decision what upgrades you want to print and which ones you like to dismiss. In my eyes, the printer is fully upgraded with only the 80mm fan for the cooling of the PSU still missing, but that's because it hasn't arrived yet. I'll probably not add an X cable chain, as it's just not necessary. Again, this is the way I did to get good printing quality, reliability and especially enhanced safety, which is important for me. Out of today's perspective, I would recommend this printer only to people who are interested in designing and installing a lot of upgrades to it. If you just want to get it printing, that's definitely the wrong machine for you. You get a printer that somehow works, but the prints are anything from good. I'm unsure whether I would buy it again as some of my other ones printed far better initially and required less upgrades, like the Anicure Castle or my latest edition, the JG Aurora A5, which I can really recommend by the way. I hope that you enjoyed this video, probably the last one filmed in that location, as all printers will get a new place soon. Thank you a lot for watching and have a nice day.